Greetings and salutations, Internet Distance. It is Iowa Foytek, and uh, there is something different. Uh, this is a collector's edition. Uh, why in the heck do I have a collector's edition of Beast Gary 2, you might ask? Well, the funny thing is, when I went to buy this, the collector's edition was cheaper than the regular edition, so I got the collector's edition. I'm not typically a person who goes and buys alt covers or collector's edition books, typically just because the only thing difference, different is like a cover, the outside cover, you know, and that to me is not worth extra $10. Typical for alt cover, but in the case of Paizo, they their book is a little bit better quality overall, and it also comes with ribbons. So maybe five dollars more. I might be more inclined to buy collector's editions if they were only five dollars more than the regular book, or call them deluxe editions, and have a few extra pages in there of some extra artwork or stuff or extra things or playtest material. And then throw in like two to four ribbons. That would be nice for a deluxe edition. But, you know, there you go. Here you go. Uh, this book, by the way, contains close to like 400, 400 some monsters. Uh, you have this really nice uh, table of contents here. That lists out all the important little details right up here, you know. Introduction, Monsters A to Z, starting at page 8. The various appendixes, starting at 304 and beyond. Ability glossary, creature traits, rituals, languages, creatures by type, creatures by level, and so forth. And it, as I said, it continues on to another page. There's like, these, each one of these books is close to like 400 monsters, or a little over 400 monsters. And they always include artwork. Now the nice thing about these is you got a nice little introduction, you got playing the creatures, explanations, how all the stat blocks operate in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, as well as the key uh, tag terms that are tied to the creature. A simple uh, navigation bar on the side. Incidentally, these are just minimal basic uh, navigation bars. There's no extra information. It doesn't add too much more to it than it is. I would have really liked it if there was numbers, uh, page numbers attached to that, and they would have spread it out. They could actually have used the entire side here to get into finer levels of detail and then maybe even drop down. Listen, they did that with the Pathfinder uh, Remaster is expand it and have drop down lists in it, but they didn't put the page numbers in there, and they also screwed up something else. But anyways... Uh, Here's a section on role playing the creatures, adjusting creatures for if you want to use a level seven creature against a party of level six characters, you could always adjust it down or adjust it up depending on your skill level of your party. You have elite adjustments. It gives you simple instructions on how to crank up the power level of the monster in a subtle way. And you have a weak adjustments which you can bring the monster down a little bit. You have uh, information on languages and what kind of gear you might have on your monster or foe. And skills, proficiency, uh, perception, and proficiency section right here. As well as sidebar icons to tell you, hey, this, this is what this icon means and so forth. As per standard, as I said before, there is typically the name of the monster or name of the group of monsters. Usually the first one in the group. It's, it's grouped by aeons and aberrations and beasts and so forth. But you have aeons here, and then you have the name of the specific monster that's in the aeon family of monsters. Some basic information about the monster. A uh, fun little bit of information in the sidebars over here or that you might want to read, read for a greater understanding. You have the name of the monster, the creature level, the uh, key terms and the stat block that d comes down here. You have various other information such as attacks and other fun things, how many actions they have, what traits, special traits, you know, whether it regenerates or not. And as I said, you have a piece of artwork for each and every creature going through. You have, It lists up here A to C, but even though it's just A so far, 
for Aeons. So it should have been just A and then you had B to C next or something like that. More Aeons, a Merket, a Bathos, and so forth. El Eudu, which is not an Aeon, by the way. Oftentimes they will actually, it's a amphibious beast, which honestly, I don't really think that should be classified as a beast. It should be something, something akin to a monstrosity. Uh, sometimes I just, I don't really care for the classification divides in which uh, pa Paizo uh, lists up creatures. Uh, there's also animals as well, which is basically overlaps into the beasts a little bit. Uh, I don't care for the fact that they uh, use animal and then they use the term beast. It should be mythical creature or uh, not mythical creature, mythic beast or something like that, or uh, a bomb, uh, abnormal uh, creature or something. It's hard to place. Uh, you got planetars in here, planetars in here, a few different varieties, uh, animate dream, and eniku. You have a nice variety. Oh, a giant ants. You got giant ants. You got ant swarms. You got uh, Eluzu, which looks like a gigantic metal elephant. It's a construct. You have uh, anchorons and so forth. As I said before, the navigation bar doesn't serve a whole lot of information other than it's reminding you and you're, you're in the A to C section, which you're looking currently at A's. Assassin Vines and Anich, Attic Whisperer and Aruvox. Interestingly enough, this is classified as an animal. Does that look like a normal animal to you? That's the that's one of the things I don't like about Pathfinder Second Edition is that they're really weirdly inconsistent on what is classified as an animal and what is classified as a beast. And it's, it's, and it's a small animal, too. So, you got a nice variety in there. Ooh, a badger. You got a badger and a giant badger. A uh, badger, giant badger is a level 2 creature. I would think badgers should be tougher than that. They should have uh, a few nice features that uh, make it harder for them to be grappled and a few other things. Because badgers have loose skin. They also have toxic, uh, they also have uh, odiferous uh, stink pouches, much like skunks, but they don't spray. It just like uh, opens up and wafts in the air or it makes it really uh, uncomfortable to be near them. Same thing with honey badgers. You also got bears, black bears, polar bears. There should also be a sun bear at some point. A uh, babolith, which is just basically just a beast fiend spider. A Bihar and a, a Blind Helm and so forth. As I said, no, oh, there's a Blink Dog and a Blued Wid and so forth. A Bodak, a Bog Strider, and so more. Uh, you always get a really nice variety in these uh, bestiaries. Uh, you get undead, dragons, drakes. Uh, beasts, animals, uh, insectoid-like creatures. You know, a cave fisher is a classified as an animal. It shouldn't be an animal. A centipede is an animal. You know, it's just, that's just a really large centipede. A giant centipede, a titan centipede. A titan centipede is a creature of nine. You got cloakers, which is aberration. A chucacabra. Which is classified as a beast. Probably should classify call that you know they should add the term cryptid. You got cockroaches, a swarm of cockroaches. Uh Paizo does a really good job of giving you a really nice variety of critters to sick on your party. And this would be like the second book you should get if you really wanted it uh, more monsters. You get the core, you get the original book. And then you get the, this book. Uh, side note, uh, the Pathfinder remaster has started. They have just released the two official books to the general public. Uh, player Core 1 and Player Core 2. 
is it still worth to buy this book if you're running Pathfinder Remaster? Yes, because all the changes is you got uh, you change alignment here and you adjust a few terms here and there and then that's basically it and you pretty much are operating on the same math you just have to change terms and this will contain a lot of creatures that the remaster monster core book will not have because some of them are OGL but also the Monster Core book is not coming out until like fall of next of 2024. So, or is it April? But I, I it's somewhere around like in the mid of 2024. Monster Core uh, one is gonna release. So you only really have the option of buying the Beast East Jerry's right now. So there you go. You got a bunch of fiends, demons specifically. A Destin of Lang, a Destochan, and so forth. As I said, uh, there's just innumerable number of creatures. Typically what I find that it's really nice that they usually put all the information for that creature on the two pages facing you. However, you'll occasionally get uh, an Ocelith. An example of, uh, uh, of this happening is with this Ocelith Bone Demo. It's actually on the next page. You just get your informa uh, little intro information there. And there's the Bone Devil. So every so often they will start on the previous page. You have to turn, if you want to start on it, you turn back. But usually the entire stat block is usually on one of the pages. Hardly ever split between two pages or going to the next side of a page or a sheet, a paper. So there you go. You got some nice dinosaurs. Each, every one of these bestiaries have dinosaurs in them. You get a nice variety of dinosaurs, like a Spinosaurus. You got dolphins. You got bottlenose dolphins, orcas, and so forth. You got some more dragons, primal. By the way, uh, Paizo is no longer going to be using the OGL dragons. So if you want red dragons, blue dragons, cloud dragons, all those other old dragons, you had to go and buy the bestiaries in order to get those those classic dragons and that you can usually typically use in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And, okay, got some uh, crystal dragons, and you got magma dragons and umbrial dragons, and so forth. A dragonfly, you got giant dragonfly, a uh, dra giant dragonfly nymph as well as a, uh, an adult dragonfly. Uh, various uh, bushes. This is really a, a drained bush. Ooh, that's going to be fun. You know, you have a bush there and the ranger goes, uh, amateur ranger or a character goes to pick berries off the bush and actually it comes out and grabs them. A drummer cat. A lasmosaur. Ooh, an elasmosaur. Elementals, they as I said, I'm just gonna. There is numerous, a lot, a lot of creatures in this book. Like just about every one of these books also has new were beasts in it as well. So there you go. I'm gonna skip a few pages, pages, and get myself all the way to the end. Uh, in the ability glossary, you have just. Your essential characteristics you want to look up, like Constrict, Coven, Buck, Aura, at will spells, and so forth, explaining various mechanics from the creatures. So if you ever have like a question, oh, well, what does that mean? Uh, it's in the back of the book in the Ability Glossary section. And then you have Creature Traits, which explains rarity of creatures, other traits, the size of it, uh, what kind of dimensions that creature takes up, you know, in the battlefield. More explanations on that, like cold, quadro, demon, de daemon, demon, devil, dinosaur, dragon, dream, earth, electricity, elemental, ethereal, a fletchling, and so forth. Then they also throw in some rituals. Uh, it's not unusual in these bestiaries to have spells that uh, the creatures use 
in the system or rituals in which they uh, can be used to either summon them or the creature uses to summon other creatures of the type. They also have extra language information in here as well as sometimes special items that are commonly used by the creatures themselves. They list out all the types of creatures as well as uh, creatures by level with important information of key terms like Bog Strider has is a let's uh, start with a simple one here. It's a, let's go with uh, a raven which is a, a minus one level creature it's category raven it types type traits is animal rarity is common and you can find it on page 221 So if you're looking for a specific creature by a certain level, you can always go to the back of the book and find it that way. And it's organized from level mi uh, minus levels all the way up to uh, the highest level, which is the highest level creature in this book is a solar, which is a solar and a wabajack, which is a 23. You have the OGL, which Paizo is trying to get off of, as well as an advertisement for or the Game Master Guide. By the way, this Game Master Guide is still worth buying if you're going to run Pathfinder Remaster because at current moment there is no NPC book for Pathfinder Remaster and the NPCs are not included in in the, the GM Core Book 1. And I like to call it GM Core 1 because it covers all the basic, all the basic intermediate stuff all the really important things you need to know to run Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And it, it has a few variant rules in there, but there's no NPCs whatsoever. And there isn't any advanced tools on top of it. It has all the basic stuff like building monsters and building hazards and building traps. As well as a few other uh, rules for alchemy and a few other things, but not all the advanced stuff of it which was co also covered in the Game Mastery Guide for the original Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So my feeling is at some point in the future, there is probably going to be a GM Core 2. So uh, currently, the score for this book for Pathfinder 2nd Edition regular is 4 stars. Uh, for Pathfinder Remaster, this is also 4 stars. It, either way, right after you buy... Bestiary 1, the regular Bestiary, you probably should go ahead and, uh, when you save up enough money, buy Bestiary 2. And by then, you'll probably get to Bestiary 3 before Monster Core 1 comes out. Which, Bestiary 3 has a bunch of extra new mechanics in there, like troop loops and stuff like that. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have a delightful day, a nice night, a wonderful weekend, a magnificent month. And uh, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking, sharing, and if you have any questions, questions uh, feel free to leave them in comments. Or if you have experiences using some of the creatures from this book, please also leave stories of your fun times with those creatures in the comments as well. It's always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. I have a delightful day, a nice night, and a wonderful week. And I said that already. And a magnificent month. Ciao.